Hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm making an indie game called Legend 64. In this video, I'm happy to share another update with you guys. I'm going to be documenting the progress I've gone through in order to make a level transition so that I can actually walk from one area to another in my game. But you'd be surprised how much actually goes into making something like this. So today, I'm going to break it down in depth. This blueprint will be used game-wide to load in levels. It's going to use a box collision to control everything, but let's make it a bit thicker so we can see it better in the editor. I can put as many of these blueprints into the level as I want, and can edit the size of the box collision to fit the level on a case-by-case -case basis. Now that it's in the game, let's give it some functionality. Also, if you're wondering what these lines being projected from the front of the character are, you can learn more about what they're doing in my previous video. These can die. The code for my level transition is going to be activated using a collision trigger, with the collision area being the box I created earlier. From there, I'm going to cast to my main character. This is a super important step, as it's going to allow me to reference lots of gameplay functions controlled via my main character blueprint, and allow me to edit them in this level transition blueprint. I'm going to create some code that will rotate the player character to face the box collision whenever you enter it. The speed in which this happens is going to be controlled via a timeline. This will take the start position and end position of the character and blend them together over a period of time. So let's see what happens. So obviously, just making the player face the direction of the box isn't looking too good. That's why I've added an additional bit of code to make it so that the camera will continually update to focus on the level transition at all times. Running through the transition zone now will make the camera work in much the same way as my Z-targeting system that I had made a while ago. Wherever you move to, the camera will be focusing on the box at all times. Now that the camera functions are working, I'm going to drag off a sequence node to keep the graph at least somewhat clean. And from here, I'll disable the player input whenever the transition is triggered, as well as implement some camera lag, which will stop the camera from moving up to a certain point. You can see how the camera now does a nice pivot to focus on the transition area whenever I run into the collision zone. Next, I'm going to set a point that I want the player character to run towards. I'm going to be using a mesh that will be housed in the transition blueprint so that it's easy to see and can be positioned anywhere I want within the level. This cone works fine, but I think I have something better in mind. There we go. The simple move to location node will let me assign an object for the character to run towards. But in order to make it work correctly, the level needs to have a nav mesh bounce volume. Anywhere in the level that is green is where an AI controlled character can move. So as long as the flag is within the green zone, the player can reach it. Okay, let's try it out now. And it looks like crap. Turns out I forgot to enable shortest path when lerping the rotators. Let's just enable it now. There. We. Go. Okay, so the camera portion of the transition is working. Next, I'm going to make it so it actually loads you into a new level. To do this, Unreal Engine has a node called Open Level. But it isn't as straightforward as you'd think, and I need to set up some variables that can be referenced game-wide in order for it to work. To start, I'm going to create a list of my levels in an enumerator. These then can be picked by my level transition BP to load. I will also need a way for it to choose where the player will spawn after loading the level. This will be controlled through my custom game instance, which has a variable for setting a custom location ID. With those created, I'm then going to add the location ID variable, which I'm making public so that it can be edited per instance, and then add a new variable called destination map, which will reference the level list enumerator and let me pick the map I want to load. You can see how when I select it, I've got a list of levels to choose where the player will get sent to. This variable also needs to be made public, so that the level to load can be made different for each of the transition volumes in the game. Running into the volume will load the chosen map, but it will always send you to a default location each time. This is where the location ID variable comes in, because now when I select the transition volume in the map, 
I can assign it a unique ID number that will correspond to a player start location in the destination map. Let's move the start location up here and see what happens. So now when I move into the volume, I will appear in the desired location. Wow, what a view! If I add multiple transition BPs into any map, I can set where I want each one to teleport you to. Let's assign the location ID to 2 and match it to the starting location tag in the other map. And voila, here we are on the other side of the level. And the first one I made still takes the player up here. Loading a new map is instantaneous, so I need to hide this by making the screen fade to black. There's a really simple node that will let me do just that, and checking hold when finished will also make the screen stay black after it has faded out. So that's working, but now I need to set up what happens once you've loaded in to the other map. I would have liked to keep everything contained within a single BP, but whatever events that were running from the previous level get killed when loading into a new one. So instead, I'm making a new blueprint that will handle the transitions for entering a new map. This one is going to make the screen fade in from black and have the main character move forwards for a few seconds before stopping and returning control to the player. I'm going to place one of these in each of the game's levels and they will activate whenever you enter that map. So if I run it, you can see the fade up transition is working, but not the character moving forwards. If anyone knows what's up with this, let me know. I've added a movement input node, assuming this would make the character move forwards, but it actually doesn't do anything. Or rather, it does, but it only does it once. To make it actually move the character forwards, I'm going to add a delay loop that will set the character to run continually until the loop is broken. So playing the game now will make the character run forever. I need to break the loop with a condition which is going to be that once a certain amount of time has expired, the loop will end and the character will stop running which will complete the transition from one level to the next. Now let's run the whole thing. For the final bit of polish, one thing I want to do that I noticed in The Legend of Zelda is that the distance Link travels when loading into a new area is based on how fast the player was moving prior to entering the transition cutscene. I think this is really cool and I want to do this in my game as well. I already have variables set up in my main character blueprint that are setting what the character's movement speed is as they play, and one that's also checking their current velocity. So I'm going to put these to use in my level transition, and have it set the character's speed to be whatever the player was moving in right at the point they make contact with the collision zone. Entering the transition at a slow pace will carry this over to the cutscene as well. The downside of this is that if you are moving too slowly when entering the cutscene, it will look a little odd and there is also the problem of changing the speed back to normal once the cutscene is finished. I'm going to reset it back to normal by adding this bit of code to the entry transition BP. So this is good and all, but I ran into a problem when falling from a jump into the transition zone, where the character will just freeze in place after landing. This prompted me to add an extra bit to the code, where if the player speed is below a certain value, a minimum speed is then set so that the player doesn't just stand in place during the cutscene. Slowly inching over the line now will make the player go into a slow walk when entering the transition. However, it still isn't working when I enter the transition from a fall. Like, why are they running there? Let's try it again. <sighs> yep, freezing in place. Honestly, I don't understand why this isn't working, but fear not. I'm adding this final bit to the code which will check if the player is falling before starting the transition cutscene. Great, it's actually working as intended at last. Thank you for joining me in another devlog. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it at least somewhat entertaining. I'd also like to thank my patrons who've been supporting this project the whole time and you guys have really kept me motivated. If it wasn't for you, I may have given up on this a while back. So I'd like to say a special thank you to my 16-bit patrons and an extra special thank you to these 64-bit legends. LRC Napkin, Mario Tavalieri, Chumbledore, Tyler Hughes, Oliver Honleyken, Yaya Dambus, Mason Stooksbury, Waro Duck, S, Melty Metroid, Warren McPeak, Paul Mayor Gorham, 
Ice Hot, Charles Tanner, Daniel H. Hernandez, Starkium, Power Hungry Fool, Flash the Reploid, Jake Hellspawn, Nick Grossi, Nicola Wallen, Bleak Bob, Twyla27, Robert M. Stwally IV. What a name. If you'd like to support the project and have your name appear in the game's credits, please consider heading over to my Patreon page. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next update.